The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour. My pleasure to be here Monday through Friday on Market Days. And this, what is this, the 11th day of December. We've had a great show with Steve Rhodes. Thank you, Steve. And pleased that you were able to, um, to overpower that Grinch that snuck in there for a moment uh, to disrupt uh, the show for just a, just a fraction. And you got right back on track. Thank you. And for all that information. So let's just go right through this. The Dow, for the last four days, has had 200 moves up and down and up and down. Four times in the last three days. And what's really important about the moves uh, is that we've made lower lows and not higher peaks but higher highs based on the nine-period exponential moving average. If you're looking at my chart right now, you will see on Tiger TV, you will see um, at this particular point, let me just go there myself, there are, click. Whoops, I haven't got the sound on. Give me one second to check. Oh, he's a, I'm doing a multitude of things. Also, just got asked if I would do Larry's show. So I'm going to be doing Larry's show as well. So it's a two-hour stint we've got here. We've got a lot of time to go through these things really carefully. Where did the E-minis e go to? They went from 2,071.75. This is the March contract. Down to 216.50. Made a fractionally lower, uh, fractionally higher high this morning, and spiraled back to where 2,048 is the nine-period exponential moving average, and what was the high today? 2,048. Quite remarkable, actually. Just look at that chart, and what's absolutely uh, uh, important about this 248 level is that 2045 is the 200 period exponential moving average which was support then was a resistance then was support then became resistance in the, at the 2053 level uh was it yesterday it was just yesterday 210 no on the ninth and then kaplop went all the way down to 21650 yesterday underneath the 200 period moving average and today is spiral back making a sideways formation right there so a close is needed above 2048 to begin to tackle the 2053.50 high bar that was made right at uh, 4 o'clock on the 9th. All right, let's get back to our story. When we're looking at these chart patterns, you will see that I've done, I drawn this for my subscribers to my opening call a little while back. I done it on the December contract, but I moved it over to the uh, March contract. And I said there was a chance for a left side, right side price time match to the 2018 level, and that has to become support. Well, yesterday, we tucked underneath it. The daily bar closed at 2019.50, which is above the 2018 level. And that says that the very next bar has to attempt to get back above that level. Well, attempt to get back. I would say that 2,048 is a little bit above 2018 by about maybe 30 points. And that was really a spectacular reversal. Now, here's the thing. I have an indicator that is really important. And that is an indicator that says, let me just go to this right here. This is what I show my subscribers. Actually, let me just get this. I wonder if I can get this chart here. Let me give me a second. Um, I sent it out a little bit late. I'm sorry, everyone. I'd done all the work. I just didn't realize it hadn't been sent out. There were so many charts. I spent so much time uh, from, all the way through yesterday, last, uh, yesterday after the close, last night, early this morning, and then I forgot to send out this chart, and it's right here. It's my overview chart. And what I discussed in the overview chart was that yesterday we hit 3. Point, uh, I think it was 3.74, 3. 7.1 in the Richard Arms um, 
short-term trading index. I call it the Chapman Wave Trend Gauge because I use it. The only reason I use it is because of the numbers. In this case, it spiraled into the threes, and that said, hey, there is a really good chance, just as there was the previous uh, two previous sessions ago, that there would be an upside squeeze of at least six to nine S and P points. I didn't say 30, I said 69. And that would be um, within two days. And when it's done, that's the assessment that we've got to make, when the squeeze is complete. So now what we're looking at, and this is going to be very interesting, there's the down channel in the, in the Dow 120-minute chart. 120-minute chart went to a peak F at 17,991, plummeted down to uh, 17,508 yesterday. The 120-minute chart of the VIX index, and we took our profits early this morning at about 6.30 or something. I said to subscribers, if anyone was uh, looking and up, I said, please take your profits right now in our second position because you, you just cannot, um, to grab an 18% gain, in, in so short a time is really good. So we took profits on the on, on part of that um, part of that position. We've still got the core position, uh, which was bought way way earlier, and uh, I mean lower. And we'll see what happens there. I mean, who's to say? And there you are with this this arch formation in the Dow and the S and P. And those are, these are the comments that I made and how everything is working and what you should be looking for. Now this is going to be very important. Let me take this away for a moment. Show you something else. Within the context of the Dow, using this chart that I show my subscribers every day, this is going to be very interesting for two reasons. One is, when you finish the Chapman Wave stalk leg formation, which is completed with that move to the head, and now you've got the beak, if there is a buy signal, that buy signal doesn't tell you how high you're going to go, but there's enough evidence in the history of this particular Chapman Wave Stork Lake formation, which goes back to uh, the 1986 or something like that, when I used to hand chart. Um, when that is complete, sometimes you can get an entirely brand new buy mode. If it fails, and a failure would be, you see the left side, right side price time edge came one day early yesterday, testing the 17,536 level, 17,536 level. Well, even in the uh, daily, we've got a Chapman Wave stalk leg formation. The MACD is trying to flatten out. The stochastic hasn't even done anything yet. It's still at 46. This is saying we are on the cusp of, of a bounce that should, if it can, take us to 18,000. I just don't see it right at this moment. Could be totally wrong. I've been talking about 18,000 psychological level. It's not a technical level. There's no such thing as a, uh, an 18, a millennium technical level. It's a psychological level. It's just like, it's like 18,001. It's just a technical level. But this is a psychological level because we slice through 16,000 right over there. Bam, right through it. Slice through 17,000. Whoosh, right like that. In a couple of days we did that. Um, days? Yeah, it was. Days, unbelievable. And um, now what we're looking at is that that level has shown so much distribution with these doji candles that I suspect until the distribution is continued, uh, until completed, that we're looking at a level of between 17,300, 200 as being absolutely key to this whole yearly move up. And you're looking at the 18,050 level as being a close above that, as probably being a breakout above. Uh, Dan, uh, Basil, maybe looking at yen would, I'm going to go through everything. We have enough time today. I'm going to treat it as if it's, as if it's technical Friday because I've got two hours. Um, I'm just going to do everything I can. And I'm going to try to do it the way I do it when I'm doing my work. My mind will just wander and say, oh, what about? And boom, I'll go there. And then I'll say, what about? And I'll go there. Because that's the only way I can cover um, areas that might not be on the forefront of my mind, but if they're in the background of the mind and they pop up, they're very important. Now let me show you a couple of things here. Within the context of markets, I'm going to run the numbers, and as I run the numbers, we'll do it. So this is the E-mini. Great move back up to the 200-period moving average, suggesting that the 2032 nine-period exponential moving average is going to be the key level to monitor on the E-mini, on the downside. 
And 2054 is a level to be watching on the upside. Okay, eight points up and uh, about 14 points down. Yeah. Okay, so now let's go on. And now I want to go right through the, the S&P. So I'm going to go Dow. Just give you, give you the parameters here based on this particular um, here so you can see the weekly chart as well. See how the weekly chart, look how the weekly chart repellent zone has been working its magic. And remember I drew this cup formation saying we might come down and have a testing of the low side and then try towards the end of next week to try to get back towards the 17,991 level um, and maybe close at the high of the year. We don't know yet because a break, a closing basis on, on Friday, that's tomorrow, underneath 17,560 or the following week without much more of a rounding to the upside would be very negative. And I have, I'm looking at the MACD and stochastic in the daily the on balance volumes given a nice signal, but not, not the... Uh, the two indicators that I really would like to see moving up. The stochastic has given a lovely indication to say, yep, this is a good move, and there's a good chance that the 17, we're at 17,735. The Dow 17,680 to 650 level should be good support on any pullback if it's intraday today. All right, enough with that. Now let's go to the S&P. We'll go through them all. SPX and anybody, if I forget one, give me a, just... Give me an email or an IM or whatever it is. So the 2055 is the S&P's uh, resistance. It hasn't gotten there. And the low that was made yesterday was 2024.26. So we 24 uh, something points above that. And now what we're looking at, the S&P's up 26. Yesterday it was down 30 uh, something. So this is a really outstanding. It might be a short squeeze. I will know towards... 10 minutes to 4, 4 o'clock, how one of the very important indicators, technical tools that I'm looking at, how it's behaving. If it starts to uh, give back much of the ends, I would suggest that we're looking at upside activity. If it's holding like it is right now and holding steady, it's a sentiment indicator, I would say, hey, be, be, still be very careful. Now, there's that, there's that resistance right there in the S&P. So we're looking at the level of 2,061-ish as being a bit of a breakout on the on a very short term to say, hey, now we're going to go back towards the previous high, make that cup formation, and any pullback towards the end of the day uh, below 2,046 says, hey, be careful. This was just a short squeeze. Uh, we're going to be going down to do some retesting towards the 2030 level. Let's go to the QQQ series. QQQ series is nicely over the nine period moving average. It's made higher highs yesterday and today, but it hasn't made a higher high today, a higher low yesterday and today, but it hasn't made a higher high. It needs 105.03, and right now at 104, whoa, I didn't see we got callers on the line. Sorry about that. Uh, we'll go back, we'll, we'll come back, and we'll go to Garo in California straight after this break. Dow's up 198, he's up 26, about the trap, Titan Conditions Hour. We'll be right back. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. 
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Basil takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Folks, we're back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour, and we've got Garo in California. Hi, Garo. I haven't heard from you in a while. How are you? How are you, sir? I'm very good, thank you. How about you? I'm well, thank you. All right, all right. Uh, I'm, I'm calling regarding the WLL whitening petroleum. Yes. I'm being I'm being shortening this stock. If you check since October of this year, when what? the candle dropped from the 200 days from there until now, in this past two months, I'm being shortening this uh, constantly, on and off, on and off, a thousand or two thousand shares at a time. Here, uh, there's something that it's a puzzle I want to uh, talk with you and have your idea regarding this matter. If you go back on 2010 or 2011, October the 4th of 2011, uh, the low of that was $28.87. Yes. And yesterday it hit twenty nine fifty seven. And it popped up. Uh, you think this is the bottom of it? It's going to go flat from here, or it's going to break that twenty eight eighty seven? Because well, on the way up, I'm going to buy to three thousand shares, and this time I'm going to keep it for a while. Okay. So, folks, what we're looking at, I'm showing the chart of whiting petroleum with the Chapman Wave methodology, uh, te uh, the technique that I use to label, I identify the most obvious low bar, in this case it is, as Garo said, October of 2011 at 2887. Um, and it went peak A, peak B pulls back, has a little mini A minus, and then it retests A. But in fact, it continues. Um, once it passes the February 2012 high of uh, 63.97, goes to leg C, then peak C, then peak D, and then it goes to peak E. In the Chapman Wave methodology, what we look for are D, E's, and F's. And at that point, you, 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 you say to yourself, okay, this is where something else can happen. There could be a change of direction, short term or intermediate term. In this case, it was a long term. Not in time, but in price. Why? Because in August of 2012, August just happens to be this very same year that we're in, it goes to 92.92 .92 and it has a low of around number 82. My, my uh, analysis would say that if it took out 82, 82 would be the number that it needs to cross, this back, cross back over to show it has strength. Instead, it has a huge red candle, an ugly candle, September. It has a huge ugly candle October of this year. It has another usual, uh, uh, just uh, an even stronger down move in um, November going from the 61, 63 high to the 41 low, closes almost up to the penny at the low of the month. And this month so far it's had the fourth, one, two, three, the fourth ugly candle. And what does that candle do? It stops, this is a monthly chart, stops dead at what? 
In other words, it's 70 cents away from its 11. So that's from its four-year cycle low, which is an amazing thing. And you would, you would not have thought when you were looking even at the nine-period moving average of 76 back in September that this is a stock that would be trading at 30 down two-thirds, down 63% or something like that in just a few months. When I go to the weekly chart, it had an A, B, C, D, E, and it went to a peak F, and it came back, and it's got what I call a propeller shaft move to the downside. That, that is like the stalk leg formation upside down. If you've ever seen a stalk upside down, personally, I've never seen one upside down except on my charts. This says that there's still room to go and that at some point the 27s, and what is 27? 27 happens to be uh, just a tad below the 2887 low of uh, 2011. That was the major low. And so I would consider anything that's going to happen now as not an intermediate term rally, but some kind of a bounce. Now, the, my biggest concern, Garo, is, and I don't want to, I don't want to move you out of any position. I want to just discuss with you. When a chart is this particular formation on the downside and the MACD is still moving, it's still expanding, it takes a little while for those vertical histogram bars, the 0% line bar of the MACD, to cross positive. But it, they have started very slowly to contract a little bit. That's number one as a positive. Number two as a positive is that the on-balance volume shows a little bit of upside move here, but the day isn't done. I'm looking at a daily chart. Day is not done. Now we're looking at WLL Whiting Petroleum trading at 30.26, up 19 cents. The big thing is that a little earlier this morning, and I had a lot of calls about this, a lot of emails as well, about crude oil, uh, gas, and a whole bunch of things like that. So it was pleasant to see that you, got, you gave a call because I'm, I respect your ability to pick turns in the market. So we've got a break coming up, and I'm going to discuss with you the stochastic, how flat it is, and what it is probably going to mean for this particular stock. We'll be right back with Goro in California, and we're looking at uh, WLL Whiting. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno-Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading, and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. 
The Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Each and every time that the dollar ticks higher, S&P wants higher price. Each and every time that the dollar is ticking lower, guess what? S&P wants lower price. Dollar, the metals, and the S&P are going tick for tick. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. We're back with uh, Garo in uh, California. We're looking at WLL, trading at 30.30, down 23 cents is Whiting Petroleum. Garo is looking to go long. Oh, Garo, did you actually start a position? No, sir. Not yet. Okay, so this is what I wanted to discuss with you. This is still a very weak stock. That's not to say it couldn't have a bounce, but I would only treat it as a bounce, number one. But number two is if you even go to a smaller time frame of the 120-minute chart, you will see that the stochastic's at 6.4%. The MACD's flat. There's very little here to say that there's strength. That doesn't mean to say that it has to go down further. It just says that rallies might just be sideways for the moment until it really builds strength but it has the characteristic of a stock i probably if you had to look at the short position i haven't had a chance to do that but if you looked at the short position there must be a pretty heavy short position so any move up will start from a flat level and it'll pretty much almost gap up and then continue higher, not giving anybody a chance to get out. Because, you know, when people are short, they tend to say, oh, 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 if they don't have a, a, a buy stop, they tend to say, I'll wait for the next pullback. The, the, the pullback doesn't come, and it goes slightly higher than the, the, the level they would have normally have gotten out, and they'll say, oh, I can't do it. now. it's just too much. I need to get it. It needs to come back. And then it goes it goes a little higher, and, they say, okay. and then finally when they get out of the position, if they were rationally thinking and they didn't have the sitting on their head, they would turn around and say, now is the time to short it instead of covering it. So I want you to be having the exact opposite uh, mentality. And what I'm going to suggest to you, you could, I don't think there's more than a point and a half or two points right at this particular moment without a bounce coming that on the downside. So that's considering you've done very well on the short side, I'm going yes. to suggest it doesn't have to be right now, today, but in this area of 30.29 to 30.55 on the upside to the low of yesterday, 29.57, anywhere around this area, give or take a point, I would say that you could actually start a small position realizing this is your pilot light, the one that's going to give you the information to say, now it's ready. Two things. One is, if you're going to cover what you're really, the ideal situation is, if you were covering and you were still short, the ideal situation is to grab it, uh, get out of your position, 
go to the long side, so you get overweight to the long side, and then you want immediately for it to get back, especially uh, if you're covering, you want it to get back to 32.64, penny over yesterday's high, and you want it done really quickly because you need that confidence. In your case, it's very different. You're out. You're looking at it fresh. So I'm going to suggest right now, you, if you want, you could just nibble on it. I really mean nibble, just a small position. I know it's not what you used to do. How many shares? I, I, like a hundred? Not, not even a hundred. Just fifty to a hundred shares. No, I don't buy fifty shares. Uh, there you are. You see, I knew that you were not no. going to do that. No. But the, I, this, is my, this, is, this is. Yeah. Let me just explain to you my reasoning. Sure, because sure, sure. With, with, with this, you're going to be focusing on it <clears throat> in terms of profit and loss. And if it starts to go to twenty nine thirty six. You'll be down a point, whereas if you have a big position now and you are, your the big position would start you off saying immediately, when I haven't even got a sign of a turnaround, that you are going along. You're, you're saying to the stock, hey, I managed you on the short side and now I'm going to manage you on the long side and I've got the reins. You don't have the reins. It has the reins. I'm suggesting that you use it as a pilot light. Why? Because when your 100 shares or 50 shares starts to make you 80 cents, that's going to give you the sense of the movement to the upside from a specific point of entry, and that will allow you to say, now I feel more comfortable about doing whatever I want you to do on the long side. But if, it's on the sh if you're in on a small position and it's down 60 cents or 80 cents, it hasn't given you any sign of strength, and that's the reason why. Or you could just do nothing and wait until it takes out today's high of 31.38, and then I would start my positions. Those are the two scenarios. And the only reason why I say that, because if today was turnaround day, this, the, the early morning spike to the nine-period moving average in the 120-minute chart, you should be calling me now saying, I just got in and I'm up 50 cents because it's trading at 30.89 or 31. That would be the perfect scenario. I don't have that yet, but it's really close. And if crude oil, I don't know if it's related to crude oil, it looks like it is, and I want to do that now. See, crude oil did the same thing. It looked like, oh, oh, today's the day, and I got many emails, and yet what it's showing you is that the stochastic is flat at 6.40 cents, 6.40%. Uh, the MACD is still expanding. Crude oil is getting ready to turn, but it hasn't yet turned. So if you're going to anticipate it, you want to see strength, rather than weakness, and it needs to happen, wow, by tomorrow, Friday, it has to happen by Friday. Monday morning at the latest, you should see crude oil running a dollar fifty to two dollars. Otherwise, I think it's in real trouble. All right. Very good. Very good. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank thank you, you. for calling. And it's just, you know, I'm just sure, giving sure. you my scenario. Thanks, Garo. Good luck. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you. Uh, so, folks, let's do this. We've got... Um, uh, we've got a little time here. I want you to continue. You've got the comp index. Let's just go to the QQQ series. I did that before. QQQ is acting very well. It's made, it, uh, it's made this M pattern, uh, sorry, the H pattern. It will start to make an M pattern if it doesn't close decisively over the 106 area by this afternoon or tomorrow morning. Uh, no, well, it won't be able to close, but the 120-minute chart will be able to close. And if it does that, that'll say, oh, now you've got the pattern that goes from a cup formation to an H formation, and then the right side successful enough to produce um, a powerful move to test the first left side high, which is 105.04, and the next one is 105.57, and then you get the major one at 105.78. Those are the levels to look at for the uh, QQQ series. The breakdown says that by Friday at noon, just as my show is finishing tomorrow, the QQQ series is below 104.40, key support area. Okay, so let's go on. We're going to look at gold. I will get back to the crude oil because uh, I want to show you something else. I had a lot of questions. I also had a question about um, 
uh, Baba, which is Alibaba in the Falling Axe Formation. But let me just go to this. The gold has turned around. The GLD was down earlier about almost a point, and now it's at 118.02. One of the reasons why I wanted for my subscribers to keep the gold uh, position that we have is that the dollar looked like it was not about to retest the most recent high. It looked like it needed to do more consolidation, and if that was the case, you should get the counterpoint move in gold, which held the, the nine-period exponential moving average of 1213 this morning. It didn't, it didn't break it. it. It didn't even get close to it, and now it's trying to turn around. If gold is able, if the gold contract is able to break above 1239, in the next, by tomorrow afternoon, closes at 12, so by about noon tomorrow, if gold is pushed above that, that's what they see in the daily. That would be a confirmation for me of two things. One is that gold is acting well, and that silver is acting a little bit better, and that the 120-minute charts have had only a sideways consolidation. So silver, the continuous contract, has to go above 17.355. Now we've got a couple of, uh, a couple of other questions, and I've got... Um, so I want you to do so this gold, gold, silver, high-grade copper, just real quickly. This is an issue. High-grade copper is, is holding off the low that was made at 2.777. So this is leg B, peak B, and it's holding well, but it, the weekly chart is still not strong at all. I'm going to be watching this very closely as an economic barometer more than anything else. We're not going to be trading it right now. It's just in a side to, sideways to down move. And... Um, Let's go to the next thing. Oh, bonds. The TLT, spectacular leg C, is now peak C. <clears throat> there should be. I say should because, you know, yeah, <laughs> this is the market. We're only trying to do the best that we can. But the, from the low bar of the TLT of 118.21, once again, I've got to tell Oda uh, that that was a spectacular call that he made. He gave her the whole parameters, everything. But I believe that if if... The TLT crosses 124.40, not today but tomorrow. If it doesn't do it today but does it tomorrow or Monday, that'll be leg D. That means that you're getting into this candle with a very that the sudden high spike on the seventh week of the 17th of October to 127.68. I, if I'm looking at that, I'm saying, wow. If the monthly is correct, that wick is telling us a great deal of information because if tomorrow the um, the TLT is anywhere close to 124. That's going to suggest on a weekly basis that it's a very strong move and that the following week we should see a leg D. And then we're going to have to assess, is the market now going to be bouncing and having a good rally into uh, uh, the seasonal period? Or is it going to continue lower as bonds spike even higher? We'll see if there's a correlation there. So the TLT, uh, 122.44 will be... 124.44 to 121.89 will be very important because a close under 121.50 says, hey, maybe you're not going to make the D. We'll watch this very closely because you're way underneath the last high of 127.68. So that's that. And I want you to look at the dollar. Here we go, dollar. Um, the dollar made a peak G. I, I just don't think, I think this is going to be a peak D in the weekly chart as we, we consolidate for uh, just a couple of weeks, a few weeks. Now, let's look at the EUR, USD. Is it rallying? Trying to rally. It went to leg A. The, the weekly chart is saying, hey, this is the first time I'm showing some signs of improvement in the MACD. The stochastic's got a nice positive deviation between uh, the, the low, low, lower lows in the euro-dollar currency pair and the rising stochastic, but means nothing until the 1.249 level on the nine-period moving average is taken out on the upside. And actually, it really needs 1.26. That's a long way to go uh, for the euro considering that since it broke down the week of the oh, the 9th of May of this year, not once has it cr closed above the 9 EMA, and only twice, three times maybe, has it spiked a tad above the 9 period moving average. Unbelievable weakness, but we're getting real close to some kind of test of the, of, of the lows. Um, now I want to do, oh, and then I had said that, so USD, I had a question if I'd look at USD, JPY, and then we'll get to the stocks. Yeah, that's a leg E. That's the same as the dollar. I'm, I'm looking at this, and I'm seeing the potential for a Chapman wave 
uh, Roman candle here, which would suggest that a, that a move in the USD JPY dollar Japanese yen currency pair in the 118.53 area will not only test the low of 120, 117.433, but the 115.93 nine period moving average might even be hit. If that happens, that dollar down, USD JPY currency pair down. Bonds going even higher would suggest this market is in for a breather. That's the way I'm looking at it. So I want you to go through those now. Baba was a question I had. Uh, falling axe formation. I, you know, I don't even see. I, I looked at that before. I don't see a falling, <coughs> falling axe formation. Oh, oh, oh! You're looking at this. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. This is a very long one. This is more one of those traditional flags <clears throat> like that yes yes so in this particular the, the question is how far can I expect the rally to be if you break out in the upside of a falling axe Chapman wave declining channel or expanding wedge what, what happens when you break out to the upside you should get a one-to-one -one of the price low to the breakout level now I'm gonna be a little fussy about that I'm putting it down there so that says that if Baba Alibaba trading at 106.60 up 2.72 is able to break above 108. Let's call it 109.50. There should be a move of 101.20 to 109. So uh, eight, eight points, and I'll take it always from there. 112. Yeah, that should take you to 112, one to one. But this is really not, this is a little different. This has other characteristics. What I would suggest to you is that if the stochastic rallies from the 30% level to the 48% level, Alibaba has a good chance of, of pushing the, the, um, the MACD higher. It won't have crossed positive, but it'll get close to. And if it does that, we're not talking about 112. We're looking at a test of the peak of the 25th of November, the week uh, no, of the 25th at 115.17. That's a long way to go from here. It's only up 272. My, my suggestion is that this is not a perfect falling axe formation until it really breaks out. And then you've got other techniques that will be superior. But most importantly, the MACD and the stochastic are suggesting it's really struggling. This is the period. It shouldn't be at 106. It should be at 115 to 117 or even at new highs. So something's going on here that is not very good. But that would be the way I'd work it. Um, that was the question. Okay, question there. There's on, on Baba. It was an IPO. Would you expect the monthly to complete A to B to C to D? Peak A, B, C, D. I be almost all IPOs, unless the market actually makes a major top beforehand, we'll get to the monthly's D's. Yes. I'll be back. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments. And whether you're bullish or bearish on U.S. Treasuries, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary perspective Prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors, employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and the power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, 
unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. TFNN has just announced a special sale for the Gold Report for a limited time only. To celebrate the 660th weekly issue of Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, that's more than 12 years, TFNN is having a special one-time sale. Right now, you can receive 60 weeks of the Gold Report, that's 14 months, for only $600. We're offering Tom O'Brien's dynamic weekly newsletter at only $10 a week, half off the regular monthly price. By taking advantage of this special offer, you also get a signed copy of Tom O'Brien's best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, an $88 value. The Gold Report is published every Tuesday and provides subscribers with Tom O'Brien's expert commentary on the industry, as well as detailed information on a variety of mining equities. Not all gold stocks are the same. This offer is valid for current or new subscribers. All the details are on the front page of TFNN.com. The sale will be over before you know it, so act now and lock in this incredible price by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Larry Pesavento, a 40-year veteran trader. He uses pattern recognition, Gartley's, Butterflies, ABC's, and Fibonacci in order to trade these markets. The Futures Hour, next on TFNN. Hi, folks. We're back. I had a whole bunch of questions, and now I see that uh, Larry is here. That's great. Thought for a moment we were going to be subbing for Larry, but I will be subbing for Daryl at 1 o'clock. So we'll wait an hour, and then I'll be back. So I'm just really interested in hearing what Larry has to say about a whole bunch of things, crude oil, gold. And I'm sure he's going to talk about some of these things because they are cusping right now. So uh, let's get back to our story here, whatever the story was. Of course, I've moved away about 10 places. Ah, oh, Baba. So I, I, I wasn't sure about that. The question is, is this a buy on BABA -B right now? You know, gee, this is a tough one because I don't have a signal yet to say that it's it, it's going to break out. I would much prefer to actually play the breakout above 107.95. But here's what my suggestion is. If anyone's interested in uh, Alibaba, you could nibble right here at 106.56. You can't get your full position. You just have to take a small position. And I would have a, a three-point stop, a, a half a percent. It's just nothing for a stop. Why? Because if it starts to pull back and goes under 103, that's real trouble. But if it manages to, to climb up to the 107.50 level by the end of the day and has, has a nice session tomorrow, that will be the first real sign of strength that we're looking at, and you're in it already. So that's it. So now let me get back to questions here. All right, a whole bunch of things. So UNG, what's the story there? It's the same as I was speaking to um, Garo about. I don't have a signal yet, and it will happen overnight, and just suddenly there'll be a gap up, and it'll be on its way. If you want to be in the trade, that's fine. I don't see all that much, just on a real short-term basis. I see a lot of support in, say, UNG, United States uh, Natural Gas, at this particular point, um, under the low that was made in 1827. But you could get chopped around by going nowhere. 
So would I, I prefer to buy strength? I'd rather have a confirmation. I'd rather have a break above the nine period moving average of 19.33. So if you want to, you can only start a tiny position here and add to it on a break on the upside above 19.47. And that one should have a, a, a slightly wider stop as you tighten up the original stop. That's the only way I would do it because you are, are, are trying your best to, to, to time um, – a reversal of a market that's gone down precipitously, not anything like the crude oil. Now the other questions I had were the crude oil. And crude oil is also trying to make a double bottom here. It's the same thing. Would I try it? Would I buy something like the USO, let's say, get back into it? Maybe. I would rather buy strength. I don't want to buy a catch a falling knife. So in this case, USO, if it broke above 23.68 in the next two days, I'd say, wow, first sign that it could go to 24.65, the nine period exponential moving average. It just might happen all very quickly, but, you know, be careful. So here's a question, uh, um, PFE, that's Pfizer. Look, it had that, I, uh, I got an email about Pfizer. I didn't get to uh, talk about it yesterday. But what I said is my target is 32.96, the high of uh, March of 2014. And today it spiked for whatever news it was to 33.12 and it's pulling back. Now I'd be a little bit careful if you have, I'd said that was my target. But I didn't expect it all in one, in an hour it did that, up and down. And now it's a 3202. I would just say I would be raising my stop and some of my position on Pfizer. Maybe I'd even take a little bit of money off and I'd try to put it back at about 3229. If you're not interested in, in playing around with an 8% or 10% uh, pullback and a small position, then stay in your position. But I definitely would start to watch it real closely on any close below 3120 then I'd say, hey, be a little careful. But right now it's acting well. So let's just go through this. About to go to Larry Pesavento, and I'll be doing Daryl's show. That is the uh, uh, Daryl's show called the Diagnostic Trading Hour. Now, the VIX index. The VIX has made a peak C in the, uh, in the 120 minute chart. Will it get to a D above uh, 18.92? It's going to be real tough to do <clears throat> if by the end of the day, it's under $15.73. It's a 1623 right now. So that's what we'll be watching. And for the Dow, um, closing above 17,720 is very good. Falling below that, but say be careful. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long Long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light speed world of ever evolving high tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. This is TFNN.